Hello everyone and welcome back to science class. Today's topic is about greenhouse gases. So, as you know, the earth has an atmosphere surrounding it and the atmosphere is made up of many different gases. We have nitrogen and we have oxygen that make up the bulk of the atmosphere. Now there are other gases like argon and uh, water vapor and carbon dioxide that are a small percentage of the atmosphere. Now some of these gases are greenhouse gases and they cause what we know as the greenhouse effect. Now the greenhouse effect is a natural process where heat from the sun enters the atmosphere to warm the earth. Now the greenhouse effect happens when these rays of heat and sun reflect off of the surface of the earth and go back into space. That is where the greenhouse gases form a protective layer. So the greenhouse gases actually prevent the rays of heat and light reflecting from the surface to leaving the atmosphere. They prevent the heat from escaping essentially and they keep it in. So what happens is that the heat comes up and hits some of these molecules, these gases, the greenhouse gases, and it gets reflected back to the earth so that it keeps the heat in. Now the atmosphere is really important, not just because it keeps the heat in, but it also protects us from harmful radiation from the sun. This radiation from the sun is where we get all of our light, which is essential for life, and the heat, which is also essential for life. So if we take a look at earth, you can see that we have some pretty big land masses, but we also have some pretty big water masses. Now the heat that comes from the sun gets absorbed by the darker areas. So darker areas meaning like the oceans and the really dense forested areas and like the land itself, like the brown land. Ice and snow does a really good job of reflecting the light and heat coming from the sun. So now that we know why the earth reflects light and heat back towards space, let's talk about the greenhouse gases. So there are a couple of greenhouse gases that are well known like carbon dioxide and methane. And then there are some other uh, greenhouse gases that are not so well known. For instance, did you know that water vapor is a greenhouse gas? Bet you didn't. There's also nitrous oxide and ozone. Now, let's take a look at a diagram to explore the greenhouse effect. Here, you can see that I have my planet Earth. I know it's kind of a wonky looking planet Earth, but that's okay. We're not judging my drawing skills here. And you can see that we have the sun up in this corner here. Again, don't worry about the angle of things. This is just an example. So this dotted line around the Earth represents our atmosphere. And as you can see, the sun is emitting waves of radiation. This is light. Some of the rays get stopped by the atmosphere and some of them get through to the Earth's surface. Here we have a comparison. Here is our normal greenhouse effect and here is the human enhanced one. Now the first thing I want you to take a look at is this dotted line that goes around both of the Earths. This one, I've drawn it to be thicker to indicate that there are more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Now, Realistically, the amount of greenhouse gases that we have put into the atmosphere compared to all of the air around the Earth is a very small percentage. But that small percentage makes a huge impact in global warming and climate change. The second thing I want you to notice is looking at the heat that's escaping. Here we have the normal heat escaping. I've indicated that by like three arrows here. But if you look here, this one has only one arrow of heat escaping, meaning that less heat is escaping to space and more of it is being retained near the Earth's surface. So this model shows that when we have more greenhouse gases, we're actually keeping a lot more heat in. Guess what happens to the Earth when we have more heat? Hmm, that sounds like global warming, doesn't it? Hmm. The more greenhouse gases there are in the atmosphere, the more heat gets trapped and warms up the earth. Now we have seen a steep increase of 
carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere starting from the industrial era till now, which for us seems like a very long time. But if we look at the grand scale of things, it's actually a very short time. We have seen a spike, like pretty vertical in just a couple of, just a couple of generations really, uh, like 200 years, less than 200 years, we've seen a massive spike of carbon emissions. And that is what is causing the current climate crisis. Not only are we burning fossil fuels, which releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, we are also growing as a population. So when you grow as a population, you need to feed the people. And if there's more people, you need more food. So we have been making a lot more food for people. And that includes vegetables, but that also includes meat products. Humans have been cutting down trees to clear pasture for farmland and for growing animals. And of course, the more animals we have, the more land we need. So we cut down the trees and we have more animals. Now, farm animals like cows, pigs, and sheep, they actually give off a greenhouse gas. It's called methane. In fact, we give this off too. Every time we fart, that is. Now, the amount of methane being released by these animals is pretty small compared to the amount of carbon dioxide we've been giving off. However, methane is a much more potent greenhouse gas. It is so much worse than carbon dioxide. So the increase in animals and farming has led to an increase in methane, which also contributes to global warming. As I've mentioned in my last video, trees help us to combat climate change by taking in the carbon dioxide that we release and converting it to oxygen for us to be able to use. But when we keep cutting down trees to make room for agriculture and for towns and industry and uh, mining and all kinds of other infrastructure, we are taking away our natural resource to filter the carbon dioxide that's in the air. So that means that the earth is less capable of maintaining the appropriate levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So not only are we producing carbon dioxide much more than we used to, we're also taking away the thing that helps combat the amount of carbon dioxide in the air. So brief summary, we have an atmosphere that protects us from the sun and other deadly dangers of space. And the atmosphere allows for sunlight and radiation to come in and it helps to keep the earth warm by keeping in the heat. It keeps in the heat through the use of greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, and methane. With the boom in industry, humans have been causing more CO2 and more methane to be released into the atmosphere, thus causing a global warming sensation. We, are, we have now created an enhanced greenhouse gas effect. And this has serious repercussions for our future and for the Earth in general. Thank you for listening. I will see you next time when we start talking about fossil fuels specifically and the impact it has on the environment. Bye!